Welcome to the Breaking Into Finance podcast. My name is Craig Thompson, and this is the open source field guide to help you understand everything you need to know about breaking into finance. Let's dive in. Hey, everybody, back with another episode of Accounting Shenanigans. And this one is actually much less of an Accounting Shenanigans episode of something weird or some error that happened. And it's actually just more of a current events piece, which is I was reading recently in a Money Stuff newsletter, which, by the way, I 100% would recommend anyone listening to this to subscribe to Money Stuff. It's a daily newsletter from Matt Levine, very accessible. He's a great explainer of financial concepts, and he will review kind of what's going on in current events in finance from a very practical and empirical perspective. So one, it's a great way to stay up to date on current events, but he also explains things kind of nicely. Um, Anyway, so this was uh, from one of his newsletters from the other week, and the, the punchline is that interest expense at the median private equity backed company ballooned to 43% of EBITDA last year. So let me unpack that statement for a second. So first, interest costs. So we're talking about interest expense on debt. And in general, it is no surprise that private equity backed companies will have more debt than the average company, um, and certainly more debt than the average public company relative to their EBITDA. And this is something we will talk more about in the private equity centric portions of the Breaking Into Finance podcast. But effectively, private equity firms tend to borrow a decent amount of money to allow them to write smaller equity checks when they're taking over you know, the enterprise value of a company that they're acquiring. And in a very low interest rate environment, having a lot of debt is much less of a big deal. If you pay very low interest on the debt, then having a ton of debt isn't nearly as big a deal as when interest rates are higher because the ongoing interest payments that you have to make can be pretty small. And so far as you can sell the company before the debt matures, or if you can just refinance that debt, which is basically to say you borrow new debt to pay down the old debt, then there's no problem while interest rates are low. The other thing that's going on that's kind of interesting here is it is a quirk of the way that private equity firms borrow from banks and other private credit lenders that they borrow on floating rate notes. And what that means is that as the Fed has been hiking interest rates, as we've seen interest rates go up, the rates on the loans that these private equity-backed companies take out are also changing over time. They're floating rate notes. And that, by the way, is different from the structure of a lot of public company bonds that they'll issue to shareholders. Those tend to be fixed rates. So when Pfizer borrows money and they raise a bunch of debt, then they are basically setting a fixed you know, 3% or 4% or 5% interest rate on those new bonds, and that interest rate does not change over time. But in the private equity world, they do. And the way that these things are typically priced is as a spread to a benchmark rate. So in the private equity context, a firm might pay 500 basis points, which is five percentage points above this you know floating rate uh, benchmark. And as that benchmark has ballooned from basically zero to you know, upwards of 4%, that is causing a big change in the interest expense that these private equity backed companies have to pay. Now, having interest expense be 43% of EBITDA, I just want to let that sink in because that's like a crazy amount. And remember, EBITDA is our earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So if your interest expense is 43%, nearly half of your EBITDA, you can think of nearly half of your company's earnings. All of that hard work that they did, you know, building and and running and operating that business, nearly half of those earnings are going in the form of interest expense to the pockets of these debt holders, rather than staying with the equity ownership of 
the private equity fund. And in fact, interest rates on the largest US leverage loans hit an average interest rate of 10% this month, which two years ago, that number was less than 4%. So interest rates on average for some of these larger private equity backed companies, jumping from 4% or even less than 4% to 10%, just a crazy move. And so this is something I think we're going to continue to monitor over time is for these companies that were originally able to borrow in a very low interest rate environment and perhaps did so before the expectation of these interest rate hikes got baked in. I think we're going to see a lot of good to even some like highly performing companies getting in a little bit more distress than you otherwise would have expected just as a result of these ballooning interest costs. Personally, I feel like this story is not getting enough attention. A lot of larger public companies that issue fixed rate debt are, first off, they're happy that they have their very you know low interest rate debt that's out there and the interest rate isn't changing. But even if it were reversed and even if you know rates get cut, and companies have fixed rate debt that maybe they're unhappy about, at least it's a fixed rate that they planned for. I think this is something that everybody should honestly be a lot more focused on is the potential possibility of some of these companies that certainly the ones that are slightly underperforming, but definitely the companies even that are kind of performing just okay, might all of a sudden be having serious issues. Because what can you do in this situation? You can't really refinance that debt because if you did, it would just be at the same higher interest rates. It gets harder and harder to pay off even little bits of that debt over time because for these companies, their EBITDA has gotten eaten into so much by the rising interest expense. So the rising interest expense today limits their cash flow today, which limits their ability to pay down debt at the end of this year which then ensures that their interest rates next year will remain quite high. And the risk here, of course, is that interest rates continue to balloon, causing free cash flow to get compressed, leading to a potential debt spiral. And the real issue here is going to come if the economy slows down and if we start seeing EBITDA be flat or declining in a lot of these businesses. So anyway, definitely something to keep an eye on. As I said, I think this is an undertold component of what's going on in the market, and I will be very curious and nervous to see how this unfolds, particularly if we head towards a recession or some sort of macroeconomic shock where we start seeing not only continued increases in interest rates and interest expense at these companies, but also potential flattening or declining in EBITDA. That does it for today's episode. Thank you so much for listening. And remember to check out our website, breakingintofinancepodcast.com, where you can submit questions, join our Substack to stay up to date on new content releases, and much, much more. We'll see you next time.